in this here make me tough to you snack cake to me yeah more house more house this been overdue forever forever ask me when it was dropping said never never should have made you cut the feather but i designed it freemason margella what's good he shall try here the most woke no joking i'm <laughs> I gotta get on the brand new video and I'm gonna keep it a bow, Ray Biscuit. I am not the type of person to say I told you so. I'm not the kind of person to hold things over your head and say, look, I pointed this out a while ago. You weren't really feeling what I was trying to say then. Cause I'm the more type of, you know, just let it happen and say what I gotta say. And if I'm wrong, I'll admit it. And if I'm right, I wait for the other person to either, you know, accept that what I might have said before may have had some merit. I'm not really the type to say I told you some of these kind of things, but this isn't the moment. This is not the moment to say these kind of things because this is a very serious situation that the Carolina Panthers are going through right now. I just got a notification to my phone, and I know some of you guys watching this video probably also just got a notification to your phone if you have the Panthers app or if you have any people who cover the Panthers uh, on Twitter and you have the notifications on, any of that kind of stuff. News just came down about two players that we had questions about after that game against the, the Cowboys. Daryl Williams and Greg Olson. Look, first off, I don't want to get to first. Should I get to the, I'll get to the actual information first. So, it's just a really short story. I'm just going to read off my phone off the app. I could have had it on my computer right here, but I'm just going to read off the phone. It's a really extremely short story. It's Greg refractured his right foot against Dallas. There are no plans for surgery at this time. We will monitor his rehab and evaluate his progress on a monthly basis. This is very, very telling. This is actually, this is a, there's actually a lot of information in that one sentence or two sentences, I think it is, one or two sentences, that doesn't really matter, it's two sentences. But there's a lot of information in those two sentences than what those words are actually saying. Now what the words are saying is basically, obviously Greg Olsen got hurt on the same foot he hurt last year that had him out, what, 10 weeks? So it's gonna be a bit of an issue and uh, he's gonna be out for some time. Didn't get out from time, and they said on a monthly basis. Now, what the words didn't say was that this may be the tipping point, and maybe looking at life after Greg Olson. See, when we gave Greg Olson that extension that goes for this year and next year, that was maybe kind of assuming health, obviously. But you know, having the same injury this year in the first game of the season as the injury that kept you sidelined for what 10 weeks last year that happened in the third or fourth game of the year correct me if i'm wrong that happened in the third or fourth game of the year didn't it it's kind of tough to you know look maybe that body part is just injury prone and for a strong blocking and especially a strong route running catching like big body tight end having your foot continuously getting broken is an extremely extremely big issue for the kind of player that Greg Olsen is. I mean, his biggest thing is that he can find the zone. He knows where to be, and he's, he's, he's a smart kind of player. But if you can't plan, and if that foot keeps getting injured, when you come back, you're never 100% after an injury. You're never 100%. You can get the surgery, you can come back and be strong, but you have to overwork, and you have to overcompensate your other body parts so that that body part isn't as stressed, no matter how you come back from it. Coming back from recurring injuries is gonna be kind of tough. So it may be us looking at life after Greg Olson. Now what this also means is, like I said in my first video, and we weren't really sure if Greg would be here or not, is this is gonna give Ian Thomas, I mean, here are the keys to the car, big buddy. So we'll see what you can do. We, we drafted you. You may have been the steal of the draft, Ian. Let's see what you gotta do. Third thing this means, or fourth thing that this means, I don't know what number I'm on right now. A lot of you guys are being really hard on Chris Manhurts, saying he was not good and overrated for a third string tight end. I don't know what a third string tight end even is, or who's rating Chris Manhurts. Y'all are getting very, very ridiculous. I, I, I'll say it, ridiculous, in the comments, in the live streams about Chris Manhurts, like this guy is actually like, like you expect great big things out of him. Well, you better now, 
Well, you better now. You better hope you're wrong now because he's now the number two guy on the team for tight end, and he will be getting snaps. And I always thought of him as more of a blocking guy, not really a receiving threat. And this may just confirm us going to more two tight end sets. I don't know, man, because when we're going five wide, and we do go five wide quite a bit of times, you'll notice that we don't have five receivers out there. It's Greg Olsen standing up. He's the fifth receiver when we go five wide. Are we going to have Chris Merritt there a lot to be blocking now? Because as a perfect segue into my next section, Daryl Williams is out. And I mean big out. Now, look, man. The, the article here says Daryl injured his right knee when a Cowboys player fell into the side of his knee. After evaluation, it is team physician Dr. Pat Connors' recommendation that Daryl undergo surgery to repair the injury. Now, the funny thing is, they don't actually say what the injury was. Was it a repeat what happened to him in training camp? Was it a MCL, LCL injury? Was it an extreme tear? Was it was it a was it a tear of a meniscus? Is it uh, something to do with you know his patella? They don't disclose any of that, but they do say. And there's surgery that needs to be done and this is where I talk about um, not wanting to be someone who says I told you so if you'll throw up this tweet from Steve Reed from Associated Press said that Ron Rivera said Daryl Williams injury not as severe as he did in training camp now what does this actually mean why am I bringing this up I'm bringing this up as a response to everyone who's in my live stream who's in my comments in my video saying Sheldon I can assure you I can promise you with all the confidence in the world that the coaching staff, they had no reason, they had no motivation, they had no no real no real need to rush back a player at all. What motivation would a coaching staff, would a player, would a team doctor that is hired by the franchise have for maybe rushing a player a little bit to get back on the field? At a position group that was weak last year, got worse when the best player left, and it wasn't addressed in the draft, wasn't addressed in mini camp or training camp, and hasn't been addressed since the preseason. I don't know, man. You you tell me what motivation that these guys on the team, including the player himself, would have to say, look, coach. I'm, I'm 100% I'm good to go when they may or may not be now I understand what happened in that play that could have caused an injury to even a non injured player But when you have a player who is injured already the chances for re-injury are significantly higher than a, a player with completely 100% Healthy legs whether or not this was the same leg he injured before and there was a knee brace on it But linemen usually do wear knee braces on both legs for the most part uh, It doesn't matter as someone who's had a serious injury to his legs, when you get injured, I said before in other videos, when you get injured, it's not just the leg that gets injured that's affected. Because when you're injured, you start putting a lot more stress and overcompensating on the non-injured leg to protect the other leg. It doesn't matter if you're in pain anymore. It doesn't matter if you think you're healed. You still do overcompensate. It's in your head. It's all in your head. You still do overcompensate on that leg. And am I gonna go ahead and believe that Daryl Williams was 100% ready to go? It would be foolish of anyone to think that Daryl Williams was 100% healed on his leg. I mean, I understand you, these guys in the NFL play through pain all the time. I think we all understand this. There has to be a, a pain threshold because you're a grown man playing a violent sport and your team needs you. I'm not taking that away. I know these guys play through being hurt and play through injuries all the time. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that at least we can at, we can at least acknowledge the man wasn't 100% healthy. The fact of the matter is, when you put more stress on the non-injured leg, it opens it up to more injury, especially when there's uh, contact, especially when there's high impact contact. But I don't want to get into all that because the real problem is we're now down our right tackle, which I think we knew that was going to be the case, and we're down our tight end, our starting tight end, which really brings into question a lot of things like what, what are the moves we can make right now? Any right tackle who's available right now, are they actually going to be worth it? So we really have to look internally here at Sila Tolu, and now that we know for sure he's getting all the reps with the ones this week, look man, it's going to be a tough coming to this game without our number one right tackle, without our tight end, that changes our whole offensive scheme. This is going to put a lot more pressure on Ian Thomas and players like Curtis Samuel, Guys like DJ Moore, it's only puts DJ Moore even farther up to have an impact earlier on. Now I have said and maintained this to this day that we don't need to 
pressure DJ Moore to carry the whole offense, and it puts the pressure on Norm Turner to maybe integrate him a little sooner. Maybe players like Demir Bird, honestly, but Ian Thomas and Chris Manhurts are gonna have to do a little bit more in the game, and we may have to put them in a little bit more to block and help out on the outside because that edge rush is going to be coming. But let me just know what your thoughts are on the Daryl Williams injury and the Greg Olsen injury. What are your thoughts for this game on uh, on Sunday? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And you already know to do that like button. Cheers to you. Appreciate the chance. Being told y'all I've been the man. Being told y'all I had the gift. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Real ones gonna recommend. Count this as another win.